I am Dr. Najab and in this video I will give you some general guideline regarding history taking in ENT. Okay, let's start. The first point in the history is introduction and consent. You will introduce yourself to the patient and you will ask his consent for taking the history. After taking the consent, you will start with the first point which is patient's bio data. Okay, you will ask patient's complete name, his or her age, sex, and then the address. Okay, after taking the bio data, you will ask the reason of his visit to the hospital which is presenting complaint complaint can be one or more than one okay if there are more than one complaints you will write or mention them in chronological order the chronological order means the first thing that happened will be mentioned first and, and so on okay for example a patient has earache for the last one week and then ear discharge for the last two days. Uh, in this case, you will mention the earache first, which is for the last seven days, and then you will mention the ear discharge, which is for the last two days. Okay. Okay, the next point is history of presenting complaint. Now you will ask all the details about the presenting complaint. Regardless of the complaint, whether it is sore throat or ear discharge or neck mass or epistaxis, whatever, there are certain points that can be asked about every complaint. These points are duration, I mean when it started, the next point is onset, whether it, it was gradual in onset or uh, it was sudden in onset. Then it's progression. I mean, whether the swelling is progressing in the size, it is increasing or it is uh, consistent or it is decreasing in the size. Okay. Then is the persistence, whether the disease is persistent or it is recurrent or intermittent. Okay. Then you will ask the aggravating and relieving factors. Okay, so these are the six points that can be asked about every complaint. In addition to these points, there are certain specific points that can be asked in certain specific conditions. For example, the patient is having ear discharge. So you will also ask about the color of discharge, its consistency, whether it is thin or thick or sticky then it's uh, quantity whether it is scanty discharge or there is copious discharge and then you will ask about smell in the discharge okay now after the presenting complaint you will also ask about other complaints that can be present in that region for example the complaint was ear discharge now you will also ask about hearing loss or tinnitus or vitigro, I mean vitigo, I mean the other complaints that can be present in ear. Okay. After completing the ear, you will move towards other parts of E and T. Okay. You will ask a few questions about nose and oral cavity, throat and neck. Okay. For example, you can ask in nose, you can ask about nasal blockage or sneezing or epistaxis or smell. And similarly, in the oral cavity and throat, you can ask about ulcers, you can ask about dysphagia, sore throat, change in voice, and any neck swelling. Okay. After completing the E and T, now you will move to systemic inquiry. Okay. In systemic inquiry, you will ask a few questions about the major systems of the body like GIT, CNS, CVS, respiratory system, urinary system, okay. For example, in respiratory system, you can ask about cough, you can ask about sputum, you can ask about shortness of breath. In CVS, you can ask about chest pain, 
tightness in the chest or palpitations then in the GIT you can ask about nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn. In the urinary tract you can ask about burning micturation or any a problem with the micturation. In the CNS you can ask about fits, epilepsy, history of unconsciousness or history of the fall. Okay. Now after the systemic inquiry now you will ask about the history of treatment of the disease okay whether the patient has taken taken any treatment or not and which medicine is being used and uh, if there is any investigation that has been undertaken or not okay now the next point is past history in the past history you will inquire about the uh, major chronic illnesses like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, asthma, tuberculosis and hepatitis and you will also ask whether there is any past history of hospitalization or surgery okay and if there is history of surgery whether it was eventful or uneventful okay now comes the family history in the family you will also uh, you will again ask about the major uh, major illnesses like hypertension, diabetes mellitus, ischemic heart disease, asthma and tuberculosis. Okay. Then you will ask about the allergy. You will ask about any allergy towards pollens or dust or anything or especially you will ask about any drug allergy whether the patient is allergic, uh, with, allergic to any drug or not. Now the next point is history of vaccination or immunization. You will ask whether the patient was vaccinated against the major uh, diseases that are prevalent in that area or not. And now you will also ask about the vaccination of COVID-19 as well. Okay. After vaccination, you will ask about drug history. The patient may be using any drug like thyroxine. He may be using as some uh, drug for diabetes mellitus, he may be using anti, any, uh, any anti-hypertensive, so you will ask about any drug that he is taking these days, okay. Now you will ask the personal history, in personal history you will ask the patient's occupation, he may be a student or he may be uh, doing some job, uh, you will also ask about smoking or any drug abuse. The next point is socio-economic history. In socio-economic history, you will ask about whether the patient is uh, you will ask whether the patient is married, about his kids, his income, and his socio-economic status. Okay, this completes the uh, history of a patient. Now, I would like to mention that these are some general principles or guidelines of taking history in ENT. I will also later on uh, make another, uh, some other videos uh, specifically mentioning the history of ear or nose or specific problems. I hope you will find this video quite useful. Thank you for watching.